There's one mistake that I see almost every editor make in their videos. And this doesn't just apply to beginner editors, it also applies to intermediate and advanced editors. The most common thing I see is the effect just isn't executed properly, whether it isn't blended properly or just looks out of place. Now this isn't something you can just turn a dial on an effect or change the value to instantly fix, but there are techniques that you can use to help solidify your effect. That's why in this video, I'm gonna show you the software I used on my most recent paid commission to really solidify my effects. When to use an effect is probably the most important part of VFX, but it also probably takes the longest to learn. Just because you know how to do an effect doesn't mean that you should do it in your video. This is something that I see beginners struggle with a little bit more than an intermediate and advanced editors, but it is something that almost everyone still struggles with. You go ahead, you learn a new effect, and then you just slap it throughout your video without it really adding anything to the actual video. I think it's really important to plan out your scenes and actually add effects into scenes that make sense. You'll see in this video that the director wanted the color of the car to change, these picture like paint effects, as well as VHS throughout the whole video. And I added them tastefully and consistently throughout, but I made sure to not take away from the actual video and actually add to it and make it more interesting to watch. There's a good example of an effect that I used only once in this video actually, and it added to the video, wasn't too flashy, and made sense with the lyrics. You can see here, when she holds up her wrist, she was actually talking about her watch. So I just added a slight shine on the watch. You might not even pick up on it if you're like just an average viewer and you're not into effects. It's something that's gonna draw emphasis to her watch when she's talking about it and holding it up. So I thought that was a good example of adding an effect that really makes sense in the video. Now throughout, you can see I changed the color of the car like this. You can see I have some digital VHS effects throughout because that's what the director wanted, as well as these picture drawings throughout. Now, if we zoom out on the timeline, you can basically see anytime there's a cut or a layer above video layer one, there's something that I did to the video VFX wise to make it more interesting, whether it's zoom, shakes, the three effects that I just touched on. But you can see that I did it consistently throughout and I didn't really deviate from those effects. I did add different variations of each effect, but I didn't go ahead and reintroduce a bunch of weird effects throughout that just I just learned that I thought were cool and flashy. I stayed consistent. I added color, I added the VHS, I added the paint and picture effect. And I also just added zooms and shakes to add energy. What tools and effects you use to create your VFX is actually really important because there's so many different ways that you can go about getting the same result using different effects, tools, and techniques. But some are gonna look more professional and cleaner than others. And I think it's really important to identify when to use what tool and when to use what effect. For example, in this car shot I did here, I wanted it to be really subtle, but I also wanted it to be really clean. You can't really ever in this video see a time where I really, really badly slipped up with a mask or anything on the car. I think it looks very, very realistic for what it is. Now for this effect, if we took five to 10 different editors and we all gave them the same effect to do, which is to change the color of the car, I think almost everyone would come up with different ways to do it. I think some would look better than others. And I think some would be more efficient than others. For this effect, I feel like I was pretty efficient and it also looks really good. I'd probably say I would be on the higher end of that. Now, I'm not saying there's not a better way to do this or there's not a way to make it look better, but for what I was looking for in this video, I wanted it to be very clean, professional, and I wanted to be able to do it throughout the video and not have to spend hours and hours masking. So the first step of this effect would be to obviously separate the car from the background and from the girl here. I wanted to mask out the car first, and then I wanted to mask out the girl's hand because I knew that using different tools would help out a lot. So for a card, there's a lot of harsh edges and edges that wouldn't really look good with rotoscoping. If you went to rotoscope, it'd have like all like jagged edges and it just wouldn't look good. So what I wanted to do is actually mask out the car like this. And what I did to do that was actually use Mocha. You can see for this example, there's two separate layers, one for just the window area. I disregarded her hand here because it wouldn't look good with harsh edges. And then I also just did the overall, overall car. And when I play that, you can see how the points are tracked. If you're not familiar with Mocha, it's really similar to just After Effects masking, but it's way easier to use in my opinion. And I think After Effects masks, sometimes it's just hard to choose the points and everything. So I like using Mocha and then turning it into an After Effects mask actually right after. Now that I have the mask all set out, if you can see when the effect takes place, if you don't have her arm rotoscoped out, it's going to go over her arm. So what I did is I made this layer just a rotoscope of just our arm right here. That way I made it as close as possible. So when you go ahead and turn on that background layer, it's very hard to see the actual rough edges. And for the mask, I went ahead and turned on motion blur because it's actually changing the position of the mask, which allows it to use motion blur in After Effects. And I think that makes it just look a little leaner. There's really nowhere in this whole entire mask that I can really point out that's like a little off. Maybe right here. When you're executing an effect like this, it's not the most important thing that every single mask is 
super, super perfect. But if you're like 95% of the way there, that way you can save a little bit of time. You can see how that maybe I could go back and change this or certain areas throughout. But if you're an average viewer, you're not going to catch up on that when I add other stuff like zooms and shakes. And we're focusing on the subject here. Now we talked about the tools we did mocha and we used rotoscoping and masks now for the effects to execute this effect even if you were to say just change the color of the car different people would come to different solutions with that some would probably use hue and saturation in my opinion for this effect it just doesn't look good it gets really grainy and there's two separate colors so what i used is change color too you can change like a spectrum of colors so i wanted everything to just change blue here and then change to purple eventually. I also added just a little bit of desaturation and glow to make it look a little bit better in my opinion. And finally, since we spent all this time masking and changing colors and dialing everything in, I didn't want the scene to just start with a purple car. I think that would waste a lot of my time because a average viewer might not even pick up on the fact that the color was the color of the car was green before and now it's purple. So what I wanted to do is kind of have it transform in like this. So I just made a mask and keyframe the the position of it as well as the color changing and then once we go back into premiere pro you can see that i wasn't even done i added some shake and transform and then even one of my presets just to have a little bit of flash and transition into it you can see with the shake and the zoom it's almost impossible to point out a spot where the mask is messed up it's going to be different for every effect that you choose to execute but the tools and effects that you use are really important so keep that in mind when you're trying to execute an effect the whole like point of vfx is to not really make it look 100 percent realistic but it's to make it so the average viewer doesn't notice that you're actually doing vfx for blending the effect it's really important to just kind of have that flow into your effect and you can see here if i have all my effects off on this drawing you can see it's a cool drawing effect but it just doesn't really flow into the edit very well you can see there's even some techniques i use to blend in Photoshop, for example, here is the overall image. And then here are some images from my texture pack. I have that paper look. And then when I drag on the different paint layers, you can see each layer is its own paint. But not only did I use that brush, you can see, for example, I have some grain in the brush to kind of just match the overall aesthetic. Now, when we go back into Premiere Pro and see when we play that, it's already looking pretty realistic. So adding some shake, a zoom in, and then some transitions in and out are gonna help out a lot. And we can play this with the sound so you can see what this sounds like. And that's pretty cool. And that helps it blend a lot more, but now the next and probably most slept on part of blending your VFX into your actual video is using sound effects. I see so many videos that have really cool effects and throughout the video, but I just think they could benefit from some sound effects. It helps make it feel more there and realistic. If we go ahead and turn on these sound effects, they're all available in my essential sound effects pack. It's a really good pack for like almost every sound effect that you're going to need. That's not super specific in music videos. Uh, you can see there's a flash, some paper crumpling and some like marker drawing. So we can go ahead and play that. And you can see how much that actually adds or it makes it feel like the effects actually there. So even for these VHS effects that I used, I actually use presets, but the thing that I didn't do I didn't just drag on the preset and leave it alone. I saw that the preset looked was like, it was probably like 95% of the way there. So I went through, changed some extra values and just made it fit the video a lot more. And those are like the simple things that you can do to blend your videos a little bit more. You can get away with using presets and effects and everything, but when you do do it, make sure to go through and change values and make it fit your video specifically. So I know this video was a little bit different. If you guys did enjoy it, like a little bit more conceptual of the video, me going through breaking down a project that I worked on, go ahead and drop a like, as well as let me know in the comments if you wanna see some stuff like how to improve your flow in an edit and just a bunch of other stuff that's maybe not an exact effect, but it's more conceptual because I like doing these videos. I think this is a really dope video and I think there's so much value in this video. So if you weren't paying attention, I go back, rewatch this video from the beginning because there's so much stuff that you can actually learn that are gonna improve your videos so much more. And I don't really see any other people really doing tutorials on conceptual stuff like this. If you want some help making your videos feel a little bit more whole, have that energy, I would highly recommend the sound effects pack and the essentials effects and transition pack that I used in this video, as well as I have a bunch of other packs and presets that are gonna help level up your videos on my website. I'll have it linked down below. Another great way to get some help and learn and improve and just connect with other people is joining the Discord. Right now, I think we have a few thousand people in there that are, you know, sometimes in the VC asking questions and stuff, and you can learn a lot from the Discord. So I highly recommend you go ahead and check out the Discord, as well as I stream every Friday where I review music videos and we just give some feedback and try to 
give you things that you can improve on. So slide by one of the streams, you'll see me live every Friday. And if you're not sure exactly when I stream, go ahead and follow me on Instagram because I do post every single time I go live on YouTube. But yeah, guys, that's all I got for you guys in this video. Hope you guys did enjoy. Peace.